Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP. Welcome back to the Hand Whisperer and lesson 22 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam course. In this lesson we go over the G5C questions. Now, the G5C questions go over resistors, capacitors, and inductors in series and parallel as well as transformers. Alright, let's get started. What causes a voltage to appear across a secondary winding of a transformer when an AC voltage source is connected across its primary winding? Now what this is called is mutual inductance, and this is sort of the heart of how a transformer works. Now to get this right, you have to know that transformers are essentially two inductors or two coils of wire that are in very close proximity to one another. Now when the AC current or AC voltage is applied to the primary coil, it's building up a magnetic field and releasing it as the current switches back and forth. Now this magnetic field sort of bleeds over into the secondary coil that's in close proximity causing it to build up a magnetic field and release it, causing current to flow in that secondary winding. Now, depending on how much power you want to transfer over to that, or how much current you want to transfer over to that secondary winding, it determine, is determined by how many coils of wire that secondary winding has compared to the first. And this bleeding over that magnetic field is called mutual inductance. Where is the source of energy normally connected in a transformer? The, the source of energy in a transformer is normally connected to the primary winding. And, you know, primary winding, primary source of energy, it, that, that's usually where it's connected. The, the, there are instances where the secondary winding might be where the energy source is connected. However, usually it's connected to the primary winding. So, one of the things you need to remember, but primary winding is where the energy is normally connected to a transformer. What is current in the primary winding of a transformer called if no load is attached to the secondary? This is called magnetizing current, and this is a definition you're going to need to memorize. Now, no load means there's nothing to draw the energy from the secondary winding um, in a transformer. So essentially all that happens is that a magnetic field just builds up in the transformer. So the current running through the primary coil creating the magnetic field which generates the current in the secondary coil is the magnetizing current. So, but since there's no load, all it does is magnetize the transformer. What is the total resistance of three 100 ohm resistors in parallel? Well, the answer is 33.3 ohms. And the, this is tricky because the way re total resistance in a circuit is calculated for resistors in parallel is different than for resistors in series. Now, resistors in series is easy because you just add up all the, the total for all the resistors in that series, and that's your answer. But for parallel, there's a formula, and that formula is 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistor, 1 over the second resistor, 1 over the third resistor, all the um, resistor components are in ohms. So to break that down a little bit simpler is you have 1 over R total is equal to 1 over 100 ohms for this question plus 1 over 100 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms because we have three 100 ohm resistors in parallel. So doing a little algebra with that you have R total is equal to 1 over the sum of 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100, which is equal to 100 ohms divided by 3, which is 33.3 .3 ohms. What is the value of each resistor if three equal value resistors in parallel produce 50 ohms of resistance and the same three resistors in series produce 450 ohms? The answer is 150 ohms. So to find the total resistance for resistors in series is you simply add them together. And since we know that all three resistors have the same value, the simplest way to solve this problem is just to divide the 450 ohms by 3, and this gives you 150 ohm resistors. What is the voltage across a 500 turn secondary winding in a transformer if the 2250 turn wind primary is connected to 120 volts AC? The answer is 26.7 volts. Now, to solve for this one, you divide the primary coil turns by the secondary coil turns. So, 2250 divided by 500 equals 4.5. Now, you divide the voltage by 4.5. So, 120 volts AC divided by 4.5 is 26.66 volts, which 26.7 volts rounded up. So, it's the closest answer. Now, there's another formula that helps you solve this as well, but for the purposes of this question, this is probably the, the easiest one. What is the turns ratio of a transformer used to match an audio amplifier having a 600 ohm output impedance to a speaker having a 4 ohm impedance? Now, the answer is 12.2 to 1. So to calculate this answer, you, you take the square root of the impedance ratio. 
that the impedance ratio is 600 ohms over 4 ohms. So that's roughly 150, well it is 150, and you take the square root of that which is roughly 12.2. So this makes the turns ratio 12.2 to 1. What is the equivalent capacitance of two 5,000 picofarad capacitors and one 750 picofarad capacitor connected in parallel? Well, the answer is 10,750 picofarads. So there, just like resistance, there's a difference when measuring capacitance circuits in parallel and in series. Now, capacitance and current are determined the same way when trying to add them together in parallel. So it's exactly the opposite from resistance. To get total capacitance for uh, capacitors in parallel, you just simply add the value of the capacitors. So we got 5,000 far odds in one capacitor, 5,000 far odds in another capacitor, and 750 far odds in the third capacitor. And you add those together, you get 10,750 far odds. What is the capacitance of three 100 microfarad capacitors connected in series? The answer is 33.3 microfarads. And this is done for capacitors in series. It's the same formula as resistors in parallel. And except you just add, you, you do the reciprocal of the, the capacitance. So you have 1 over 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 and so on. So total far odds is equal to 1 over the sum of 1 over 100 1 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100. So that comes up to the sum of, well, 1 divided by 3 over 100, which equals 100 divided by 3, which is equal to 33.3 .3 microfarads. And I'll have all these formulas broken down on the website. What is the inductance of three 10 millihenry inductors connected in parallel? The answer is 3.3 millihenries. And so for inductors in parallel, you do the math the same as you would capacitors in series. So for this question, the uh, answer is going to be 1 over the sum of 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 for the 10 or the three 10 millihenry inductors. You break that down a little, a little more, you get 1 over 3 over 10, which is equal to 10 over 3, which is equal to 3.3 millihenries. And because all the inductance is in the same unit of measure, um, you don't need to convert to henries to solve this. What is the inductance of a 20 millihenry inductor in series with a 50 millihenry inductor? The answer is 70 millihenries. So for inductors in series, you simply add just like resistance. So 20 millihenries plus 50 millihenries equals 70 millihenries. What is the capacitance of a 20 microfarad capacitor in series with a 50 microfarad capacitor? And the answer is 14.3 microfarads because capacitance in series, you calculate the same way as resistance in parallel. So total far odds is going to equal to, or ex actually total micro far odds in this case, is going to equal to 1 over the sum of 1 over 20 plus 1 over 50. So you break that down uh, a little bit more, you're going to have 1 over, we got a lowest common denominator, it, so 1 over 5, 1 over the sum of 5 over 100 plus 2 over 100 is going to give you 1 over 7 over 100 and then you do the math for that, that's 10 over, or 100 over 7, which is 14.28, or roughly 14.3 microfarads. What component should be added to a capacitor in a circuit to increase the circuit capacitance? Well, what you're going to want to add is a capacitor in parallel, and this is going to pull off of the finding the total sum of capacitance in a circuit. So capacitors in parallel, to get the total capacitance for the circuit, you simply add the capacitors in parallel together. So it's just like resistance in series. Now, to get capacitors in series, total capacitance for capacitors in series, you have to do that formula where it's 1 over 1 over the number of capacitors. Now, so if you were to put a capacitor in series, you would actually reduce the total capacitance of the circuit mathematically. So to increase the capacitance of a circuit, the component you would add is a capacitor in parallel. What component should be added to an inductor in a circuit to increase the circuit inductance? Well this one, because inductors and capacitance in a circuit is measured differently, you want to add an inductor in series. Because inductors in series, to get the total inductance for a circuit, 
you'd simply add the inductors in series. Now, if it were in parallel, you would do the 1 over 1 over inductor 1, inductor 2, inductor 3. Now, this is just like the last question, except it's reversed. So putting an inductor in parallel in this, in this instance would actually reduce the total inductance of the circuit. So if you want to increase the, the total inductance, you want to add an inductor in series. What is the total resistance of a 10 ohm, a 20 ohm, and a 50 ohm resistor in parallel? The answer is 5.9 ohms. So resistors in parallel are measured the same way as inductors. So total resistance is going to equal to 1 over the sum of 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus 1 over the third resistor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in this case, total resistance is going to equal to 1 over 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 50. You've got to find the common denominator, so that's going to bring it to 1 over the sum of 10 over 100 plus 5 over 20 plus 2 over 100. Excuse me, that's a typo in the middle one. It's supposed to be 5 over 100. And that's going to come up to a total of 1 over 10, 17 over 100. And you do the math further than that, that's going to bring it to 100 divided by 7, which is 5.88 or approximately 5.9 ohms. What component should be added to an existing resistor in a circuit to increase circuit resistance? Now, just like the previous questions like this, you're, you're going to want to, you have to know the formula for calculating total resistance in a circuit. And that's different with resistors in series than it is with resistors in parallel. So to increase circuit resistance, you're going to want to add a resistor in series. And just like the, for the same rationale as the inductance and capacitance, um, if you put a resistor in parallel, you would actually reduce the total resistance in the circuit mathematically. So to increase total circuit resistance, you want to add a resistor in series. And now it's time for the G5C quiz. So take out a piece of paper and a pencil and number 1 through 16. And I'm going to recommend that you go to the website at handwhisper.com and kind of watch the video while you have this lesson's page loaded up because uh, formulas and everything are going to be on the page and it'll help you go through it the first couple times. The formulas for this really aren't that bad and there seems to be a trend. You just got to know, you know, to get total, which formula to use for total resistance, inductance, capacitance, etc. So once again, I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick. So if you need to pause the video and work out the problems, feel free to do that and take all the time you need. When you're done with the exam, go to, go to hamwhisper.com, check under the exam answers page. The answers will be there under the G5C section. So now that you're ready, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. What causes a voltage to appear across the secondary winding of a transformer when an AC voltage source is connected across the primary winding? A. Capacitive coupling. B. Displacement current coupling. C. Mutual inductance. Or D. Mutual capacitance. Question 2. Where is the source of energy normally connected in a transformer? A. To the secondary winding. B. To the primary winding. C. To the core. Or D. To the plates. Question 3. What is current in the primary winding of a transformer called if no load is attached to the secondary? A. Magnetizing current. B. Direct current. C. Excitation current. Or D. Stabilizing current. Question 4. What is the total resistance of three 100 ohm resistors in parallel? A. 0 0.30 ohms. B. 0 0.33 ohms. C. 33.3 .3 ohms. Or D. 300 ohms. Question 5. What is the value of each resistor if three equal value resistors in parallel produce 50 ohms of resistance and the same three resistors in series produce 450 ohms? A. 1500 ohms. B. 90 ohms. C. 150 ohms. Or D. 175 ohms. Question 6. What is the voltage across a 500 turn secondary winding in a transformer if the 2250 turn primary is connected to 120 volts? volts AC. A. 2,370 volts. B. 540 volts. C. 26.7 volts. Or D. 5.9 volts. Question 7. What is the turns ratio of a transformer used to match an audio amplifier having 600 ohm output impedance to a speaker having a 4 ohm impedance? A. 12.2 to 1. B. 24.4 to 1. C, 150 to 1, 
or D, 301. Question 8. What is the equivalent capacitance of two 5,000 picofarad capacitors and one 750 picofarad capacitor connected in parallel? A, 576.9 picofarads, B, 1,733 picofarads, C, 3,583 picofarads, or D, 10,750 picofarads. Question 9. What is the capacitance of three 100 microfarad capacitors connected in series? A. 0 0.30 microfarads, B. 0.33 microfarads, C. 33.3 .3 microfarads, or D. 300 microfarads. Question 10. What is the inductance of three 10 millihenry inductors connected in parallel? A. 0 0.30 henrys, B. 3.3 henrys, C. 3.3 millihenrys, or D. 30 millihenrys. Question 11. What is the inductance of a 20 millihenry inductor in series with a 50 millihenry inductor? A. 0 0.07 millihenrys, B. 14.3 millihenrys, C. 70 millihenrys, or D. 1000 millihenrys. Question 12. What is the capacitance of a 20 microfarad capacitor in series with a 50 microfarad capacitor? A. 0 0.07 microfarads, B. 14.3 microfarads, C. 70 microfarads, or D. 1000 microfarads. Question 13. What component should be added to a capacitor in a circuit to increase the circuit capacitance? A. An inductor in series, B. A resistor in series, C. A capacitor in parallel, or D. A capacitor in series. Question 14. What component should be added to an inductor in a circuit to increase the circuit inductance? A. A capacitor in series, B. A resistor in parallel, C. An inductor in parallel, or D. An inductor in series. Question 15. What is the total resistance of a 10 ohm, a 20 ohm, and a 50 ohm resistor in parallel? A. 5.9 ohms, B. 0.17 ohms, C. 10,000 ohms, or D. 80 ohms. Question 16. What component should be added to an existing resistor in a circuit to increase circuit resistance? A. A resistor in parallel, B. A resistor in series, C. A capacitor in series, or D. A capacitor in parallel. And that's it for the quiz and lesson 22, and I know you're pretty happy about that. Now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, check the answers under the exam answers page. Uh, they're under the G5C section of questions. And until next time and lesson 23, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the